All right, guys, we're going to be doing the install for this 12-inch uh, digital, digital display. Uh, first thing you want to do is take off your negative battery cable so that way you don't you know, mess up anything crazy with the airbag or honk the horn like, you know, it's going to be kind of annoying if you, while you're doing this install, you keep hitting the horn or whatnot. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> right after that, um, I've already done this step because it's kind of difficult uh, to explain. So I'll do it a lot easier with the airbag already off. Uh, so there's a hole on each side of the steering wheel. Let's see if I can, I can point to it. See right here where my finger's at? Um, you gotta get like a really small flat tip screwdriver. This is like uh, the little small sets people usually use for like, uh, you know, glasses and stuff like that, whatever. Just stick it off in that hole. You have to get really close to you can see this here. Right? And there's a spring coming over here. There's a spring right here that you have to compress. I'm sure if I can do it or not. There you go. In order to get this airbag off. And once you do it on both sides, the airbag just comes right on up. Uh, right after that, there are two tabs that hold the airbag in place. You just push down on those tabs. as you possibly can. And there you go, comes right on out. There's a pigtail on the backhand side. Come on up, sucker. Just gonna set that piece off to the side. Your bag, it's out of the way. All right, uh, the next pick toe we're gonna get off is at the top. It's just held there by a little retainer clip, whatever, just push down the clip, and it comes right on out. All right, I'm gonna move these guys out of the way. Next, we have to get this uh, steering wheel bolt. It is a uh, 24 millimeter. Hold on, put it back. Oh. Make sure that they can see it. Okay. Right. Just gonna fasten on there. I actually kind of already broke the loose before, <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little loose right now. It will not be that soft when you guys take yours off. Just do the rest by hand. Take your bolt and set it to the side. And the steering wheel comes right off. What I went ahead and did is uh, I took off all the switches that need to be removed. Um, like I said, there's a couple of uh, T20 bolts that are sitting in here. Just take them off. And then this one's held in there with a, a pigtail. Just push the little tab on top of the pigtail and this guy comes right on out. And what we're gonna have to end up doing is uh, taking these bolts out in order to uh, swap out the proper switch, all right? It's actually, it's really quick and easy. I'll show you guys one real quick and then we're kind of gonna just kind of speed on through uh, the rest of them. So again, you know, real quick and easy. Doesn't take any time whatsoever. Um, you're gonna use this guard again for the next cover. You realize that, you know, the, oh, excuse me, hold on. Uh, that the existing ones uh, don't have the frame on them. Oh, sorry. Nope, oh, you'll realize the existing ones don't have the frame on them whatnot. So you'll have to actually take the uh, previous one on and take it off and then just match it to this one. So we're gonna put this uh, this bottom T20 back on in there. Wait, wait. Good. Dude.
problem with the set that I ordered, uh, a definite accent on Ford's behalf. Uh, so when you order the actual part itself, um, it comes with three switches from, from Ford. So the deal is that of the three switches that they sent me, two of them are the same, which was a definite accident. I'll have to actually wait on that part and do that install later. But so they sent me two, two of the navs on accident. This is supposed to be the directional switch up top for the actual dash itself. So I'll have, I'll have to contact Hell Horse Performance and find out what happened there. But either way, on with the show. We're gonna go back ahead and get back into the car with not and get ready to uh, take the dash apart. Now that we're back outside, we're gonna just pop up this little trim piece right here for the bezel. And in order to get this bottom piece off, you're gonna have to use another T20. There's a bolt sitting right here. And then we need our seven millimeter socket, see that, to remove a bolt that's a little further back. It'll be pretty obvious once you get on down here and have a look. All right, we're gonna go ahead and just drop this guy down with nuts. So that way you can have a little bit more room to work with. Again, that pops up and it's, it's out of the way. piece comes right on off. This right now. All right. Uh, next up, we're gonna go ahead and just remove this pigtail right here. Held in there with uh, another just a little clip. Pigtail comes off. There's a couple of uh, switches over here on the side that have to be removed. Again, held in there by just some regular old clips. Nothing, nothing really major. Actually, it's just, it's just the one. Now we've gotten that picked out of the way real quick. There are two T20 bolts that sit on top of here <clears throat> before we can remove and take this piece off. I'm gonna try to do it with my drill, but if not, then I'll have to get a, a little T-handle real quick and do it that way. You remove this switch all together, swiddle it out, and it comes right on out. And see, I won't be able to actually record it. But there's a black tab back here behind this switch. I have to just kind of pull on it, and then it comes comes right off. And the um, the new install uh, comes with its own, so you actually won't be putting this back on there. Now we're actually going to start working on taking out all the uh, the trim pieces. We're going to start on the left hand side. Uh, I would always suggest using an actual, uh, uh, not this. <laughs> They'll use a screwdriver, try to uh, use an actual like tool used to taking these parts off. Um, just so that way you don't, you know, scratch up any delicate pieces or anything like that. Uh, 
that piece just pops right on off, but now we're gonna put it in the floorboard, so we don't have to worry about losing that. Uh, all these pieces right here are held in there by uh, seven millimeter bolts. I'm gonna get my handy dandy tool real quick. Take this guy and sit it right here. with everything. Just put them on top of those right there. Uh, let's see. Here. Now we're going to pull this guy out the top. There's a switch that holds it in there. A little pigtail. Just take that and pop it off. <clears throat> this bottom piece right here. Held in there. There's retainer clips again and just has another pigtail. Push the pin in, take it off. Alright, we're gonna just go ahead and pop this guy off. Get it out of the way. Held in there by another switch. Pigtail. Looks like there's actually All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this guy out. I'm gonna try to do on the side so that way, you know, to leave no bruises, no marks, and my beautiful stain. Don't be like me. Don't use this. Don't be like me. Don't use this. Don't be like me. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that off. Come on. Don't be like me. Don't be like me. This piece comes right on. It's all held in there by clips. It's a pain in the butt a little bit, but not really. I've already had a couple of uh, aftermarket parts get reinstalled on mine for like the CD player and whatnot. And she comes all right out. Looks and sounds a lot worse than it actually is. Uh, as far as taking the trim pieces off, that's the last trim piece you're gonna have to remove. Everything else is just bolts and you know a little bit of a framework, whatever. So from here, uh, there are four seven millimeter bolts that hold uh, this trim piece in right here for the bezel, excuse me. Uh, two under the air vent, and then one on each side of the stairwell column. Guys, don't get intimidated by you know doing these kinds of installs. Uh, they're relatively simple. Um, just kind of keep up with all the the bolts. You know, don't try to keep too many bolts in the same area, so you don't get them confused. And then this piece just comes straight out. The uh, man, she's a little dirty. The new. Uh, install for the cluster comes with its own bezel so you actually won't be using this anymore so the old dash is just held in there by clips we've already taken the bolts off for it the two that are on each side of the steering column so you just kind of push up and hold down on it whatever and it's just held in there by a switch So you guys can see this little piece. There's actually one little retainer uh, pin that has to be removed. I'm not gonna record me removing it. I'm just gonna do it real quick because it's gonna take a little muscling. Uh, once you take once you take this little piece out right here, this this part comes apart. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have to do uh, is take these two bolts off right here. <clears throat> After you remove these two bolts right here, this plate 
for the 2015 through 2017 Mustangs actually has to be removed. Um, you're gonna make a, a cut up here. You can't really see it in this corner, but it's right behind the air vent. Just be really careful. Uh, a cut right on top of here. A cut right on top of here. And then one straight all the way across. Uh, for that one step, I just went down to Walmart real quick. Just bought a little cheap little cutter tool. Um, you're literally just going to cut across here. I'll actually record. We'll get that on video or not. We're going to cut across here. Uh, cut across here. And this little spot up over here in the corner. Um, and then all the way across on the top to remove this little guy right here. So we cut a little trim piece up here in the corner and right here and right along here. Uh, reason being, I mean, you can still get it out, no problem, but we want to be able to pry this up because there's an air duct that runs right back behind here and we don't want to accidentally end up nicking it. So just kind of hold and hold this up right here. I'm going to cut straight across. Uh, you can use an adrenaline tool, you can use you know, a hacksaw. I, I find that you know, this tool is just a lot easier to use. I went over to, to Walmart, uh, bought a little cheap one called a Hyper Tough, and just buy like a bit that you can use to actually you know, use for a cutting tool or whatnot. Um, this thing is like probably $25. <laughs> So we got her out. Um, like I said, that's the little corner piece at the top. But not sorry, mosquitoes out here. Uh, corner piece at the top. You know, cut along here, cut along here, cut straight across, and that will expose the vacuum piece. I've already uh, put the uh, screen on in there. That looks really good, guys. You're gonna be really happy with the uh, finished details. Uh, I noticed that behind there, it's a uh, you know, like it's a little wobbly. I just got you know some some material, not some soft cloth materials, and I just kind of push it on back here, just to make sure this doesn't move. It doesn't really, it's not required or anything, but I do listen to loud music. I have you know 12 inch subwoofers in the back, and whatnot, and I just didn't want that to rattle around as I listen to my music. I'm not even sure if it would do that if I didn't put anything back there, but just in case, since I've already got everything on off, I went ahead and put some racks back here. Uh, either way, uh, now we're gonna actually install our bezel trim piece back on top. And now from here on, we're just going to be putting everything uh, back on in reverse order. Uh, I'm going to start with putting these two bolts back on under the vent, 7 millimeter. All right, and now we're gonna put the uh, the trim piece back on. All right, now we're actually gonna go ahead and install the uh, the actual manual blinker and wiper switch. Just gonna go ahead and slide it on in there. Um, remember we use the, uh, the T20s to put those bolts on back in there. All right, so now we're just gonna mount the, uh, the steering wheel back on. I went ahead and put that uh, pigtail switch in there. Just one last thing to you not know, worry about. Uh, now, again, the unfun part, of course, you know, my, my switch uh, didn't come in. What I'll end up having to do, <clears throat> once it does finally come on in, I'm gonna have to just take uh, the steering wheel uh, and airbag back off and then put that switch in there. Hopefully you guys won't run into that. Um, little heads up, I did contact the guy from Hell Horse. Uh, they got in contact before. They said they've been having this issue where they've been sending the, the NAS switch twice. So if you just want to make sure that whenever you guys do order your parts, 
make sure you reference to you know the guys over at Hell Horse to double check with Ford to make sure they sent you guys the right part. Okay, guys, we've already done the install. Uh, I just want to show you guys what it looks like. Uh, we're gonna hold the brake down and fire it up. So I can get the camera to focus. There you go. And that's the uh, that's the finished product. You know you can uh, oh, get the music off. You can change you know the uh, the way it looks. Let's see if I can get to focus again. Go to your cluster appearance. Sorry, this camera's wanting to mess around with me or whatnot. But you can change the way it looks. There she goes. And uh, that's the finished product. Uh, in order to get it to go from uh, this look, though, uh, after you do the install, there's some software stuff you have to do with the Foreskin website. And um, I will be making a video on how to do that. Uh, also, I'll be making a video on the, all the uh, intricate little things that this little cluster can do. So that way you can get, you guys can get a better feel of like, uh, you know, it, sh it should technically do all the things that the 2018 uh, and above Mustangs can do. Basically, I mean, you can put it in reverse and it looks good. And uh, yeah, but all right guys, uh, that's it for now and I'll catch you guys on the next one.